In this video, we're gonna be looking at some typography tricks that we can do with CSS only. Like here, we have this nice drop cap that's right there. And this first line that's here uh, is all more bold, but we're not doing this with spans or, or anything like that, because if we go and we take a look, as the text is adjusting on this layout, you can see that that bold and all cap text is actually adjusting along with the paragraph itself. And it's automatically always the first line only. The drop cap you could do with a span here, but there's other ways of doing that as well. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at in this video. Welcome back my friend and friends, and thank you for coming and joining me today for this tutorial. If you are new here and you don't already know, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, we learn how to embrace the cascade and fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if not madly deeply in love with it, at least be a little bit less frustrated by it. And we're gonna be looking at a few little cool things that we can do with some pseudo elements that just make our life a little bit easier, can add some spice and pizzazz to your projects. And as I said, we don't need spans or anything like that. We just need a few lines of CSS to do what we were just looking at. Let's go jump into the code and see how we can do this. All right, so first off, we are here in VS Code, and this is actually part of a bigger project that I built out, so this entire layout, if you wanna see how I did it, I did it as part of a live stream not too long ago. The link to that is in the description down below. What we're gonna do, and there's different ways that you could approach both of these, but for me, the way that makes the most sense is this entire div where all these paragraphs live is my article body class. So that's where I'm gonna be working off of. So we're gonna go and choose my article body, but I don't want the body, I want a paragraph that's inside of it. So this is the direct child combinator. So we're gonna say that a direct child that is a paragraph. And in this case, it will be all children that are direct paragraphs. So if we said that and we said the color is red, it will change all the paragraphs that are inside here to red. So you can see they're all getting switched over. Ah, but we don't want that, we only want the first one. And this isn't even what we're gonna be looking at, but we have the first child pseudo class. So first child pseudo class is going to select the first paragraph that is inside of there. There is also a first of type, and in this situation, they're both gonna do the same thing. But first child would mean if the first paragraph isn't, if the first child inside my article body isn't a paragraph, it wouldn't apply this class. And for me, I think that makes a little bit more sense here, but you know, if we need to change that up, you always could, but so we're only choosing the paragraph if it's the first child within article body, and we've selected all of this but I don't want all of that. I wanna select only this letter L here and I don't wanna use a span. So what we can do is come in here and choose my first letter. And you'll notice here it's a one uh, colon and over here there are two of them. And this is because this first child is a pseudo class and this first letter is actually a pseudo element, which is a little bit different. I'm not gonna deep dive the difference between pseudo elements and pseudo classes in this video. If you'd like a video that I actually go and we dive into the differences between them, leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, but yeah, we need the double colon on this for my first letter. And now, actually, it should be red, there it is. We didn't see it because it was selected, but it has switched over to red. So that's a good first start. And as you might be able to guess, based on that, we can actually come on this and say that the font size is bigger. And let's try doing something pretty big. We'll do 5M. Uh, I'm using M in this case because I want it to change depending on the size of my paragraph. If you want to go with rem, you can. If you're not sure about the big difference between M and rem, there is a card popping up right there that dives into the difference between the two of them and sort of how I like using the two of them. Um, so with 5M there, but you can see it, it has caused some layout shifting and some weird stuff because of all the spacing on that. And part of that is because this letter is really big and we have line height on that and everything. Um, interestingly, the line height here, if I did a line height of one, it's not really gonna change anything. It's a little bit closer, but we still get a bigger space because it's, Still, the line height's now actually 5M because the line height, a unitless line height, which is what I always, always recommend, uh, is based on the font size. This is like the only time I would ever want to use a line height that's not uh, unitless. So in this case, my font size on my paragraph is actually one rem. So I could come in and say the line height is one rem and then um, we get a, a line height that's a little bit better. The only issue that could happen in this situation is it could actually start colliding with other things around. And that's even a calc like one rem time, well, I guess 1.6 would actually work um, perfectly there to match what I had on my body. I'm not gonna dive too deep into it because we're not worried about that. This is if you want more of a, this is called a raised cap when the capital letter is sticking out the top. We want a letter that actually shrinks, like pushes down a drop cap. So what we can do is we don't really need the line height on there. So I'll delete that and we're gonna replace that with a float. And yes, it's 2021 and we can still use floats. They're still relevant uh, or even if this is in the future. And it's no, you know, 2022 and beyond. Floats will still be around. They just play a much smaller role than they used to. 
And this is more of what floats were meant to be. Now, the one issue with this is you do sort of have to play around with your font size to try and get it to match how you want it to look. It just depends on the font and how big you want it and all of that. But we'll come in with a font size of six and maybe a font weight, uh, font weight of say 750. I'm using a variable font, so I can actually use like pretty much any number between 300 and 900. So we'll go with a 750 because I think it looks pretty good. And I could stop there. We could leave it like that. Or if you do want to push it more, you could come in with, say, a background on there. And I do have a custom property for this. Um, if you don't know about custom properties, once again, there's a card coming up because custom properties are the absolute best. And I'd strongly recommend that you do get comfortable with them. Uh, we'll go with like a 05 M on there because, again, M are re relative to the font size. If ever I change this font size, that padding will change with it. I want to keep it pretty small, so 0.05 M. That also does mess up the spacing and everything here. So once again, this is where uh, things don't end up being perfect all the time. Uh, but I think if we did that, we could also add a border. We'll do like five pixels solid. And interestingly with borders, if you don't give a color, it's the default color is the color of your text. It's like the current color keyword. Um, so just to show you, if I did a color of red, which I wouldn't do with yellow, but you can see that they both change, even though I haven't declared a color on my border there. So there we go. Um, I think that's looking pretty good. One last thing we'll do is a margin on the right side of 0.05 M as well, just to give us a little bit of spacing. And I think that doesn't look too bad. So you can play around with this, do whatever you want with it, um, but create some nice drop caps. The one other reason that I like doing this article body and choosing first of type is just because if we did, um, let's just say we did all my paragraphs. So I take out this first child. Don't do that. Please, please, please never do that. Um, drop caps are very visually heavy. They really pull the eye of the reader, uh, especially if you have a color on it, but just having a big drop cap can really grab the eye and having all these drop caps everywhere is really distracting and makes it really hard to read. So one drop cap per article, per page, whatever it is, stick with that and it will look much better and your readers will be very happy with you if you, if you do that. Um, now the next one we're going to do is if we come in and do my article body, we're going to choose our first paragraph again. So first child. But this time, instead of doing the first letter, we're going to do our first line, which once again is a double colon because we're doing a pseudo uh, element. And let's just say the color is red, just so we can see it change, and you can see it's worked. And as the page adjusts, it's always, they hear it's stopping at Emmet, and then as we have more words there, it just magically figures it out, it knows where the first line is ending, and it looks fantastic. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do that, but we could come in with, say, the font weight of 750 again, and maybe a text transform of uppercase or something else just to make it stand out a little bit compared to the rest of the text. And I think that looks pretty cool. And if you like this video and you like these little things that can just make your life a little bit easier without having to get too complicated, another pseudo element that's now gained support is the marker pseudo element, which I dove into in this video right here. It's really cool. You can style your bullet points on lists just so, so easily. So if you haven't seen that one yet and you're interested, please do check it out. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as a thank you to all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.